Hello everyone, bringing you another unboxing video today looking at some Dutch Air Force issue web equipment which has been very kindly sent to me by Jeff Andre. Uh, the Dutch Air Force used web equipment similar to the RAF in that it's the same uh, pattern as used by the Army but in a blue-grey finish. So Jeff had a, a, some of these components, some components of that Dutch issue equipment surplus to his requirements and has very kindly sent it over to me. So without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at what's arrived. Okay, so what I found when I started unpackaging this was it was all, it was inside the box and then all wrapped up and tucked inside the pack which has been sent. So I uh, decided to just get it all out and dump it in a pile and then we'll have a look at each item individually. So I've got the pile of items over here and we'll start off with a couple of belts which have arrived. These are essentially 1937 pattern in form. It looks like they've never had buckles at the back though, which is part of the Dutch webbing system. But they are, as you can see, fitted with eyelets down the bottom. So they used the buckle system, the British uh, system with the buckle, the hook and loop buckle there, the Mills hook and loop buckle, uh, the two sliders, and obviously they, they adjust in the same manner with the pockets on the back. But you can see they have eyelets down the bottom. This is for the use of M1910 style hanger hooks. We're Dutch using U, uh, US type canteens in canteen carriers, US canteen carriers and also in trenching tools as well. So there's a couple of those and you can see they're in this blue-grey colour as opposed to being in, in green or khaki. A couple of belts there. We then have a selection of braces. Now some of these I think are actually British made. So we have a reduction woven example there. An odd marking here which I'm, I'm not particularly familiar with but doesn't look quite right to me and it's on the outside face of the brace as well. Obviously the, the spide that's supposed to bear against your shoulder is this side, so I would expect the stamp to be under there. So slightly spurious stamp there, not sure about that. But a set of those, some of them do have the loop on the back there as you can see where these would cross over. You loop one brace through the other. So a set of those there, to two sets of those there. We then also have uh, a cartridge carrier here. Now this is this is a a clone of 1937 pattern. I believe it is Dutch. I'd happy to be corrected on that. We have a very faint stamp in there which isn't legible unfortunately. But uh, cartridge carriers, you could carry uh, two charges of, of 303 or perhaps a, a Garand clip in there. I know I believe the Dutch did use the Garand post-war. So you have that there. Uh, if we open this up here you can see there is a divider in the centre there which would allow you to carry the two charges. Uh, it's possible that's Belgian, or I'm not entirely sure on that. I'd be happy to be corrected. Uh, not completely au fait on, obviously, all the different clones of 1937 pattern which were manufactured, but it is a clone of 1937 pattern, slightly modified, of course, but someone could perhaps clarify on that. I'd be interested to know, looking at all the details there. Uh, I know Belgium did use the 303 uh, ammunition post-war. I'm not entirely sure the Dutch did, certainly not in charges. I know they used the Bren. But I'm not entirely sure on that, so as I say, the cartridge carriers there, I'd be interested to know if anyone could clarify uh, those who, uh, who issued them. We then have the pack here, and I believe this may actually be a British example uh, looking at it. There are no markings, unfortunately, under the, the flap here where they would normally be. There's nothing to, to give away the game there. But it follows the form of the 1908 pack, later, latterly repatterned as 1937 pattern, but just made in this blue-grey for Air Force use. So this could well be British. Uh, I think this is quite a mix, looking at what's arrived, of, of different countries' web equipment. But as you can see, it is just a 1908 pack manufactured in blue-grey. So that's a useful thing to have, part of the RAF 1937 pattern web equipment. We then have a haversack here as well. And this is, again, they do have a, a purple stamp underneath the flap there, which I can't quite identify. Possible, there's a faint date there at the bottom. I'll have to have a closer look at that. But again, this is exactly as you'd expect for 1937 pattern. There are no modifications to this design. So it is essentially a 1937 pattern haversack in blue-grey. In fact, if we opened it up, you can see it has the, the standard form of dividers inside there for the, the mess tin, the water bottle, or the two mess tin halves in the front there. And then we do have uh, another pack here which was rolled up inside. Have a look here, I haven't looked at this one yet. So well, again you have the, the same TAWO manufacturing stamp there and then date stamp of 1952 perhaps in there. A broad arrow next to it, not entirely sure on that. But again just another 1908 pack manufactured in, in blue-grey as you can see there. Then we do have 
a modified design of Haversack here. I believe this is, uh, this may well be Belgian, I believe. I'm not entirely certain on that, but it has the additional uh, strap here at the back to allow an entrenching tool to be carried, as you can see there. I believe that's what this is for. And if we open up this here, you can see SM, uh, FNZM, sorry, VOLH 65, I think. So, not clear on my European markings there. So if someone can clarify on that as well, I'd very much appreciate it. Um, we do have the strap at the back here as well, uh, which I believe is, is to do with attaching an entrenching tool uh, round onto the front there. As I say, not entirely certain on that, but uh, it's obviously a European clone of 1937 pattern with some modifications. And then we have here a couple of the uh, Mark III pouches fitted with a, a quick release, and these are British made. You can see the, the Air Ministry store code on the back there. Both of these, uh, or oh, this one's missing it actually, but they are they are a pair of Mark III's. And you can see underneath the lid here, you can see the manufacturer and the date there of 1953. Not the world's clearest stamp, but clear enough. And this one's a little more clear. There we go, 1953, and the, you have the code underneath, so I believe yeah, you have the corresponding codes actually stamped under the flap on one of them and stamped on the back on the other, as you can see there, 23 stroke 241. So a couple of British RAF issue basic pouches there from the 1950s. And then one other thing that Jeff sent me is a little uh, promotional pack from I believe he was working for for Boeing at the time uh, he sent me this stuff I'm not sure if he is now I think he mentioned something about moving on to a different project now but sent me this along with the, uh, the nice little notebook little pen and everything in there and a lanyard and I'm quite sure that is a patch perhaps I think tucked away in there as well so thank you very much indeed for that Jeff and thank you for sending all of this lot over to me it's actually quite a, a mix of different bits and pieces so much appreciated thank you very much indeed if you've enjoyed watching this video and you'd like to see more from the channel please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.